G'day, Hugh here from vrdesign.com.au, a design company based on the Gold Coast in Australia. Thank you for joining me. Now, in the previous tutorial, I took a raw photo and I edited it in Photoshop in Camera Raw and I did a split raw conversion and uh, this was the result. If you see there's a link there, you can have a look at that tutorial if you haven't seen it. But uh, it, well, it ended up quite good. But what I want to do now is take this same raw file and uh, bring it into Luminar and uh, have a look at the results that we get there and then we can compare all three photos, the original raw photo, the Photoshop edit and the Luminar edit and just see how it all compares, you know, what's, what works in some and doesn't in others. Obviously Luminar has a lot of uh, ability to edit your photo and I'm not going to go through absolutely everything today. I'm just going to follow a similar process to what I did in Photoshop just so we can see as a starting point where we're at. Okay, so let's hop into Luminar and, uh, with that RAW file and get going. So I've opened up this image in uh, Luminar that we previously edited in Photoshop. It's a RAW image and this is the unedited version and I thought we'd follow a similar workflow as to what we did in Photoshop. Now Lumina has uh, many, many, many more options that we're going to, uh, more than we're going to cover today, but I thought following a similar workflow, we could then compare the two images that we have ended up with. Now, uh, what I did to begin with was uh, the chromatic aberration. So if we come to raw develop, we have the option here of lens adjustment. Now, if we zoom into 600%, like we did in Photoshop, and come to, actually, I'll come out a little bit and choose that same sort of rock area that we, we worked on in Photoshop. And we can see there's a slight discoloration around the edges. So if we were just to reduce the redness there in those edges, now this isn't anywhere near as automatic as it is in Photoshop, but with a couple of little tweaks there, we've got a similar result. It's still, it's still there, so not quite, uh, quite as precise as what uh, we would, uh, would uh, what we get in Photoshop. We can just play around there with a little bit. We get almost a, a neutral color edge to the the rocks there but it is very 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 uh, finite uh, so the next thing we did was uh, straighten up the horizon and we could do that by coming into transform and rotating but it's probably easier to come up here to tools and ch choose the crop tool and we have a straight line then that we can work with and then we can just come down to the corner here and and by cl clicking there we've got uh, an, a, the grid added so we've got an, another line that we can line up the horizon and get it looking pretty straight and then say done. So that's uh, the first steps that we did in Photoshop, remove the chromatic aberration and fix up the horizon. So what we did after that was worked on the sky. So we could uh, do uh, a similar thing but what we'll do is we'll add a new adjustment layer and this will be for our sky separate from our original layer and uh, we can add more layers on as we go so what we did in Photoshop was we used brushes to brush in the sky so we warmed it up and then we uh, blew up the the blue sky so we can uh, work with the uh, brilliance and warmth by clicking on Brilliance and Warmth and uh, increasing the vividness and the warmth. Now that's going to impact our whole photo. We just want to work on the sky, so we can choose the brush here, click Brush. With our brush selected, we've got the options here on size and opacity and, and softness. and uh, Right now we can paint this in, those adjustments that we're, we're wanting to add into the sky. So we can brush that in and then 
work on the intensity of it. And then we can say done. And likewise, we can work on the, the blueness of the sky by going to color temperature and uh, making it a, a lot bluer. And again, choosing the brush and just brushing that in to the sky areas. So it gives us a nice blue sky contrast to the, the redder clouds, the orangey and pinky colors in the clouds. And that's with our color temperature. We could even add just a little bit of magenta in there as well. And you say done to that. So we have uh, done similar work to the sky as what we did in Photoshop without impacting these areas of our photo. Now what we also did was we warmed up the sky further with a graduated filter. So we can come to color balance and uh, create a nice warmer looking sky, increasing our, our yellows there, adding some red in. A little bit of magenta. That's in the shadows. We can so work on the midtones and definitely the highlights. We can do yellow and red. And in the shadows, I think we'll just bring that red down a bit. And then we can select the brush here again, but choose a gradient mask. And it says click to draw new gradient or to draw gradient. Click and drag. So you click and you drag. And we bring it down to that sort of area there. So if we come back to our midtones and yellow that up a bit and add a bit of red in, and we can say done. So now you can see we've really just worked on the sky. Okay, so now we've added that gradient in, uh, we can work on the lower part of the, the photo. And uh, what we can do is we can uh, add a new adjustment layer, and this will now be our rocks. So what I did then uh, in Photoshop was increase the, con uh, the exposure. So we can come down to exposure, and bring that exposure right up. But we don't want it impacting on the sky, we just want it down here. Now to do that we put a mask on it and uh, we drew a square around the area we're working on and put the mask on which returned the sky back to, to normal. Now we don't really uh, have that option in Luminar in the same way that we can do that in Photoshop. But what we can do is we can choose a brush, for example, uh, make it at least double the size, and then and brush that in to the photo, but not impacting on the sky. So I think we'll bring up that exposure even more. So again, we can add brushes, we'll just uh, say done to that. And uh, another brush which we did was what, uh, with the, the rocks we, uh, what uh, I think I added a bit of detail, but we did a bit of dodging and burning first. So we can come to dodge and burn, click start painting, and we want to darken. So we'll just zoom in on the areas we want to darken, and we can just brush in these areas that we did like we did in Photoshop which gave us good contrast in the water like so and with Luminar we need to zoom out and uh, brush in those other areas that we worked on 
in Photoshop. So similar concepts there, just by dodging and burning, and then gives us a great contrast in our water. And then we can say done to that. Come back here, fit the screen. Now a couple other things, I put adjustment layers on in in uh, Photoshop. Uh, one thing I did was uh, a little bit more overall uh, increase of the uh, exposure. So we can go with a new adjustment layer here. And uh, we've done exposure. Then we want to do um, an overall uh, develop. Uh, we can just do a little bit of work on some of these aspects of the photo, bring down the highlights, open up the shadows, increase the clarity. The whites down and the blacks up. If we have a look at this, uh, we've also the color temperature I'm, I'm pretty happy with. Probably boost the clarity up even more. Now I'd like to add one, another layer, new adjustment layer, and uh, work on the, uh, I think I'll work on the uh, uh, details. But rather than uh, details enhancer, which has small, medium, large details, uh, rather than have using that I think I would like to work a little bit on the clarity and what I would like to do is boost that up but brush it only in on the rocks so just immediately in our line of sight when we really want that looking very nice and sharp but uh, what we will do is bring the brush size down and then just add a little bit to these other rocks here but not impacting too much on the water okay so we can say done to that and uh, we have a fairly similar situation as to what we had in our Photoshop image now I added a little bit of uh, saturation so we can come here and just boost that up a little likewise and uh, that's pretty much in line with what we did with our Photoshop so we started with that and ended with that so that's a fairly similar workflow so as you can see here we've got the raw file and the Photoshop edited file and the Luminar edited file quite uh, quite interesting results. Now obviously Luminar has many many other things we could play around with and uh, we may do that uh, down the track uh, but f following a similar workflow this is uh, where we've uh, ended up with uh, Photoshop and with Luminar two very cool looking images uh, both uh, applying different uh, techniques and I think probably Luminar is a bit easier overall to use because it's very much choose your filter click on it and if you can apply brushes and and graduated filters and and that sort of stuff it's not too difficult to get around so I thought that's an interesting comparison and I hope you've enjoyed uh, watching and uh, stay tuned for more tutorials later on